Hi guys, my name is Josh. You've probably seen me in a couple of videos and if you haven't, welcome! Welcome to my channel. Good to have you here. In this video, I'll be going over Le Chatelier's principle in chemistry. It's a, it can be a somewhat tricky concept, some might say. However, I'm here to simplify it for you and here to tell you that it's really not that bad. So let's jump into the lecture I have prepared for you all. So here we have the question, what is Le, Ch Le Chatelier's principle? It sounds very weird. It sounds French, doesn't it? And I think it's French. I don't really know the language that well. But what I can tell you about Le Chatelier's principle is that it's a principle that describes the behavior of a chemical equation shifting to alleviate stress with the purpose of maintaining equilibrium. And you might ask me, what exactly does that mean? Well, here's the thing. Chemical equations, they want to exist in a state of balance in which you have the same concentration of reactants as you do with products. So a lot of times when you have an excess reactant or an excess product, it's going to shift in such a way such that in the end, there will be an equal concentration of products to reactants, which is described as equilibrium. The concentration may not be 100% equal, and that is dependent on a number called the equilibrium constant, which I will explain in a subsequent video. However, in Le Chatelier's, the principle is still the same in that we tend to shift products and reactants to where they end up being the most in equilibrium. So for question one, we're presented with the acid dissociation of acetic acid. And if you guys don't know what acetic acid is, think about vinegar because acetic acid is found within vinegar. So we're presented with this question in which we have acetic acid dissociating into its ionic form and its conjugate base. So which way does the reaction shift when the concentration of acetic acid is increased? Well, if you increase the concentration of acetic acid, you're increasing the concentration of the reactants. So the equilibrium is going to shift right in such a way that it's going to relieve the stress from the excess reactant and put the stress on the products since we have more reactant than we do products. And that is exactly what ends up happening. I personally love doing Le Chatelier's principal questions with arrows. I usually put an up arrow and then an arrow going to the side that way. So yes, it's going to end up going to the right as the products go up. Hopefully that makes sense in question one. Question two, we're starting to get a little more difficult. And the reason why is because the way question two is presented is not all that straightforward. The question is saying, which way does the reaction shift when pH is decreased? And some of you might be wondering, Oh man, I don't know what happens when pH decreases. Well, when pH decreases, we know that pH is going to have more hydrogen ions, given that pH is equal to negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So because of the negative log, as pH goes up, hydrogen ions go down. It has an inverse relationship. So when pH decreases, the amount of hydrogen ion concentration should increase as well. So as hydrogen ions increase, we're going to increase the products. So we are going to favor the reactants. So it's going to form more acetic acid, AKA shift to the left. That's exactly what we're gonna get in this question. All right, so we're going on to question three. Which way does the reaction shift when pressure is increased? So note here that as the questions get harder, what they're asking is a bit less direct than it was before. Because question one was asking, what happens if you simply add more acetic acid? Question two was low-key saying, what happens if you add more hydrogen ions, but in a different language? Now question three, is even more indirect. So we have to think of it this way. What happens when pressure is increased? Well, when pressure is increased, volume ends up decreasing. So you end up having less space. And in particular, I want to note that the last two questions, they were about aqueous solutions, whereas this question is dealing with the gas. So gases, they can be compressed into different volumes, whereas liquids cannot because liquids are incompressible. So when we increase pressure, that means we have more gas molecules in a smaller space, which is exactly what's going on in this scenario. So in order to solve this question and to understand which way the reaction is going to shift, we need to think of it this way because pressure means that you put gas molecules together. Imagine if I were to have a party at my house and a hundred people were to come. My house cannot fit a hundred people in. It would not be too favorable. It would be a lot more suitable if 10 people came in. 
And if my house were much smaller, it could be more suitable to a party perhaps of 10 people. The same thing is going on when pressure increases. It prefers that there are less moles of gas within a space because it's able to fit them in. As explained by this little gas tank or pressure jar I have right here in, the, in these images down below. So in the first image, we see that on the reactant side, we have four moles of gas. We have one mole of nitrogen and we have three moles of hydrogen. And I put the yellow boxes around the coefficients because in order to count moles, you're counting the coefficients of each reactant and each product. So you want to compare coefficients. You want to add up all the coefficients on the reactants. So one plus three makes four and then all of the coefficients in the products. So we just have two, which still makes two. So we have four moles of gas in the reactants, two moles of gas in the product the equilibrium is going to end up shifting right because higher pressures favor lower moles of gases, given that it's easier to squeeze two moles of gases into a smaller space. So that is exactly what ends up happening, shifting to the right. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video about Le Chatelier's principle with this really cool presentation I made. Hopefully it looks uh, very sleek and modern. You know, that's my expectation. If this helped you understand Le Chatelier's principle better, please press the like button and be sure to subscribe to get more chemistry tutorial videos. I'm Josh and I'm signing off. See you later.